Now, as you can see here at the top, we have a new Excel template open. It's labeled as two capital financing template. If you didn't get a chance to download this, go back to the last lesson, please, and download it and we'll meet you here. So we have a situation here where the company has decided to proceed with the project outlined above, and it has the opportunity to refinance its current debt and replace it with a brand new issuance. So your goal here is going to be to complete the weighted average cost of capital in this cell. But in order to do that, we're going to need to perform some work down here below. So you should be able to start off here and back solve for the amount of equity in the current capital structure. For additional capital in this cell, you'll need to look at the project up at the top that the company is considering or actually decided to proceed with. So this additional capital here, together with the current capital structure, should allow you to solve for the amount of total capital down this column here. Then you can back solve for the amount of equity in this column here. That will allow you to calculate here the weight of debt for each one of these five potential situations that the company is looking at. These are the pre-tax costs of debt, so you should be able to calculate here the after-tax cost of debt using the tax rate, which you'll find down below. We already have for you here the cost of equity put in place, so you need to calculate the weight of the equity. Then you'll have everything you need to calculate the weighted average cost of capital, and you should be able to then look through these and select which one is optimal here. You can even use a formula in here to determine which one is optimal. Just a little hint, if you put a one in these cells, you'll get a checkbox with a zero. You'll just get a dash like that. Once you've decided on the correct weighted average cost of capital, then you can summarize it down here with the weight of debt and the weight of equity, the cost of each, and then use those to calculate the weighted average cost of capital down here. Once you're done this step, don't forget to go back up to row 10 and complete the weighted average cost of capital there. Good luck. So you may have encountered a couple of tricky spots on this particular worksheet. So let's go through it together. Starting right here, the current capital structure, let's back solve for the amount of equity. So it'll be 800 million minus 300 million gives us 500 million there. For the additional capital, we're going to say equals minus, and we're going to go up to the top here. If we subtract this number, that'll give us a positive number in that particular cell. Let's bring this back down so we can see what we're doing. So now we can calculate the total capital in here. It's going to be equal to this cell, and we're going to tap F4 to lock it, plus this cell. And again, we're going to tap F4 to lock that in place. The total equity now here is going to be equal to total capital minus the amount of debt. And the weight of the debt is going to be equal to the debt divided by the total capital there. Now we have these formulas in place. Let's do a copy, control C, highlight down with the shift key, alt E S for a paste special, down to formulas and hit enter. So now let's check out the cost of debt here, the after tax cost of debt. Pre-tax cost of debt, multiply that through by open bracket one minus the tax rate here, 30%. We're gonna tap F4 to lock that cell, close the bracket, and hit enter. Now the weight of the equity would be equal to the amount of the equity here divided by the total capital right there. We have these two done. Copy, highlight down with the shift key, all TS, and down to formulas for a pay special formulas. Now let's bring this together to get the weighted average cost of capital. It's going to be the weight of the debt multiplied by the after tax cost of the debt plus the weight of the equity multiplied through by the after-tax cost of the equity, like this. And we can copy these, highlight down, Alt-ES, down to formulas, and hit enter. Now we can already see the weighted average cost of capital here, and the lowest one appears to be right here. So what we want to happen in this cell is we want a 1 in here, and we want zeros in these other cells just like this. But how are we going to get a formula in there to do that for us? So we can use an if statement and a min function. So if this cell is equal to the minimum of, and let's select a range from this cell down to that cell, close the bracket, then we're going to want to return a 1, otherwise just revert to a 0. 
and then close the bracket like that. We're going to hit enter, but now we need to go back in and lock some cells down. We want to lock down these red cell references right here, We're tapping F4 like this. And now we can copy that formula, highlight down, Alt ES, down to formulas, and hit enter. Now this is putting the checkbox there automatically. Now what we want to do down here is that we don't just want to link up to the weight of debt right here because that wouldn't be dynamic if the optimal capital structure changed. So we're going to use in here a sum product formula equals sum product like this. And we're going to grab array one will be the weight of the debt here, comma, and array two will be this array here. And when we hit enter, we're going to get the weight of the debt. So now for the cost of the debt, let's also use a sum product again. And we can grab the after tax cost of debt there, comma. And then for this array, we want to grab these and we can hit enter. Let's go through a similar exercise here with the sum product. And we want to grab the weight of the equity. So right up here, the weight of the equity multiplied through for the second array here and hit enter. And then we want to grab the cost of the equity using a sum product again. And the cost of the equity is here, comma, and we want to reference these just like that. So the sum product function is really useful because we can use it again down here. And we're going to select the first array here as being the weights, second array as being the costs, and when we hit enter, we get the weighted average cost of capital. Now we've definitely done most of the work, but there's one little step remaining. Back up at the top here, we had asked for the weighted average cost of capital to be pulled into this cell. So we want to reference down to this 9.41% right here and hit enter. And now we've completed the whole assignment. So we're going to continue here in the same Excel template. But as you can see, we've moved over to the second tab labeled as addition. So just like before, we're looking for the weighted average cost of capital in here. The company's decided to proceed with this project, but the situation's a little different. It plans to add incremental debt to its existing debt to finance the project. Now, because the company is leaving its existing debt in place and adding some new incremental debt, you're going to see as you're building this, it makes it a little bit more complex than the last situation. So as you can see here, the company has four different debt options that it's evaluating. We're going to give you a hint. The optimal option is going to be option B. So we're going to recommend you put a one in here, just like this. So what you can do down here is just link up to option B and then do a copy, highlight across, alt ES, down to formulas and hit enter. So we've pasted all of those formulas. Now the right way to do this would be to replace this with a lookup function that looks up here for the one and then returns option B, for example. We'll leave that up to you as to whether or not you want to replace these with a lookup function. Now that you know the debt package here that the company is going to proceed with, you should have everything that you need now to complete this section here and all the way down to the weighted average cost of capital. Now one hint, once you have the existing cost of debt here, then the new cost of the new piece of debt, you're going to need to calculate a weighted average in this cell that's weighted between the relative weights of these two costs of debt. Good luck. This one's a little bit tricky. If you get stuck, we'll definitely help you out in the next lesson. The other thing that you can try if you like a challenge are these cells up here. In order to fill in these cells properly, we actually use a one dimensional data table. We're going to link this cell up to the weighted average cost of capital and then put the one dimensional data table in there. If you don't understand what that is, that's okay. It's pretty rare that you use those, but we'll walk through it with you when we look at the solution. Good luck with it. So if you couldn't figure out part of this worksheet, don't worry about it. It's quite tricky. So let's get into it and go through it together. So let's start off in this cell. Instead of linking this to option B, let's use an X lookup function. So we want to put in X lookup. The lookup value we're going to hard code as a one. That's what we're looking for. The lookup array, we're going to look up in this array here comma, and then the return array, we want to return from here. When we hit enter, we get option B. 
So next up, let's use option B now to help us look for other values. Let's start in this cell here. We're going to pop into this cell and use an X lookup again. With the tab key, the lookup value is going to be option B. We're going to tap F4 to lock that. The lookup array is going to be this array right here. And we're going to put in a comma. The return array in this case is going to be this after tax cost of debt. Let's hit enter. Before we finish off there, let's go back in and we're going to completely lock the reference for this red reference here with an F4 and hit enter. Now we can copy that formula, highlight all the way across these cells, Alt-TS, down to formulas and hit enter. Next up, let's go down here and back solve for the amount of equity. It would be the total capital minus the debt like this. We can copy this formula, highlight down, Alt-TS, down to formulas and hit enter. The amount of new capital in total that we need, it would be equal negative and go all the way up to the project here, 1.2 billion and hit enter. Let's just bring the screen back down so we can see what we're doing. And now what we can do is we can link this new capital up to the tranche of debt that we're using right here and hit enter. To get the revised structure here, we want a sum function. Great little keyboard shortcut is to hit Alt equals, which puts in an auto sum. We can pop over here, Alt equals, and hit enter. So now the weight of debt here would be equal to the debt divided by the total capital. And we know the rate of that new debt as well. On a pre-tax basis, that would be equal to 6% right here. Let's calculate this cost of debt in a moment. First of all, the weight of the equity would be the equity divided by the total capital right there. Now, in order to get the cost of debt here, we're going to use these costs, but we need to weight them for these weights here. So it's a little tricky, but let's do it. Equals, we're going to open up a bracket, and we're going to first of all calculate the weight of this debt divided by the total revised structure here. We're going to close the bracket and multiply that through by this cost. Then we're going to put in a plus sign. We're going to open a bracket again, and we're going to take the weight of the new capital divided by the revised structure there, close the bracket and multiply that through by this cost and then hit enter. So now we can get the weighted average cost of capital here. We'll grab the weight of the debt, multiply that by the after tax cost plus the weight of the equity and multiply that through by the cost here and hit enter. Now for this section, it's going to be okay just to link things up. So the weight of the debt is over here, 44%. And the weight of the equity, 56. Cost of debt, after tax basis is right there. And then the cost of equity is right here. Definitely a nice place down here to use our sum product function again. So let's grab this as the first array. This is the second one. And now we have the weighted average cost of capital. We can quickly link that in up here where it says weighted average cost of capital there. Let's link it up to 8.37 and we're all set at the top. Let's go back down here and just look at how we can complete this schedule now. So that was tricky, nice work. And we've definitely completed the hardest parts of the schedule. Let's jump ahead to the next video though, to look at this one dimensional data table and how we can automate the calculation for what is optimal. We'll see you there. So we're going to demonstrate a data table now, and you may have seen two dimensional data tables, but we're going to use a one dimensional data table, which is a little bit more rare. If you've never seen one before, you're in for a treat. Let's get started. So the first thing that we're going to do here in this cell right here is just put in an equal sign. And if you could please link up to the weighted average cost of capital right there and hit enter. So now we're going to ask you to select from this cell all the way down like this and across like that. Now we want to activate a data table. Let's tap the Alt key. All these letters appear up here. Next, we want A for data. And in the data menu, all the way across here, W for what if analysis and then T for data table. It brings up this dialog box, but if we hit escape, we can also use Alt DT, which is way easier to remember DT for data table. It's set up for a two-dimensional data table, but we don't need the row input cell. So let's hit the tab key to get here for column input cell. And then we want to use the cursor to select down here where it says option B. And then we want to hit enter like that. 
Now you should see different values in here for the weighted average cost of capital. If you don't, there could be a couple issues. Number one, make sure that you have X lookup functions all the way across here, and you don't have these directly linked up to this row right here. The other thing that you can check is your settings. So for your settings, let's tap the Alt key once more and right up here, F for file. And we wanna go all the way to the bottom left, T for options. This dialog box comes up. We want to tap the down arrow once to get into formulas. And here under workbook calculation, we want to make sure that you're on automatic. You don't want to be on partial or manual or your data tables won't work. Once you're sure that you're on automatic, you can click OK right here. Now we just have one last step. Recall that we've hard coded a one in here, but we want to automate this for the minimum. So equals if. If this is equal to, or is equal to, the minimum of this range from here down to here, then we want a 1. Otherwise, we just want a 0. And then we're going to close that bracket and hit Enter. Now, before we go any further, we want to lock down this red reference with an F4 like this. And now we can do a copy, highlight down to here, Alt-ES, down to Formulas, and hit Enter. So this is now completely automated now. What the computer's doing is it's toggling through option A, B, C, D. And each time it does, it's giving us the weighted average cost of capital there. Then what we're having here is the min function is investigating which one is the lowest, and it's setting that as the optimal capital structure. Then that is coming through on here, which is translating all the way through the schedule down here, all the way down to this weighted average cost of capital, which is right here. Now, if you found that one tricky, that's okay. There's lots of Excel techniques in there that we used, so don't feel badly if you didn't quite get it. One last thing you could do if you like is set this font to white here, since we don't really need to see it. Great work on this one. Now we've definitely discussed the main purpose of corporate finance as being to maximize the value of a business through planning and implementation. We've also talked about the three main sections in this course. Well, we're now into the third section on capital return. Now, a corporation would only consider capital return if that corporation could not find suitable investments, i.e. investments that were actually creating value for shareholders. As long as the firm is finding suitable investments, then it will be proceeding with those investments and looking at capital financing, which is appropriate for those investments. But when it cannot find appropriate investments, it then considers capital return, which we're going to discuss now, and we're going to learn the different ways in which corporations can return capital to its shareholders. So if we're talking about the return of capital, obviously corporate managers need to decide to retain excess earnings for possible future investments and operational requirements or distribute the earnings to shareholders, which could be in the form of dividends or share buybacks. So here's an example of how this decision-making process could work. Let's suppose the company is considering an investment. We can see the initial negative cash flow and the ensuing positive cash flows. We can see the cumulative cash flow and also the break even point. Let's pretend that this investment could generate an internal rate of return of 22%. This sounds like a great investment, but we really need to compare it to the weighted average cost of capital. We know from previous discussions exactly how we could calculate that. So suppose they calculated the weighted average cost of capital as being fairly high, 28%. Now they're in a position where they could make a decision. The internal rate of return at 22%, but the weighted average cost of capital is higher than that internal rate of return. So they make the decision to return capital to shareholders. This could come in the form of a dividend or a share buyback.